What mistakes are you making with your NFTs or non-fungible tokens? Or perhaps you're getting ready to learn about the NFT space and you want to avoid making mistakes. Hi there, my name is Brian Collins and welcome to the Creator Economy Show. In this video, I'm gonna cover some of the mistakes you must avoid if you want to get involved in the NFT space. These are some of the mistakes that I made and that other NFT holders and creators I know have made. If you like the content in this video, don't forget to press a thumbs up. If you want to get more videos like this about NFTs or the creator economy, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now remember, before I get into this video, the content is for informational purposes only. NFTs are incredibly risky. Many will go to zero, which I'll talk about in this video. And you've got to do your own research. I'm not a financial advisor, so play it safe. Let's get into it. The first mistake that many new people make with NFTs is buying cheap ones at random. The first time I went on to the NFT marketplace OpenSea, I went over to the rankings tab like I do on a cryptocurrency exchange and I looked at the top 20 NFTs. Couldn't believe the floor price of some of the top NFTs. If you're new to NFTs, floor price represents the minimum amount that an NFT is being bought and sold for on the secondary market. Many of these were trading for several dozen each, which represents tens of thousands of dollars. So I went all the way down the rankings page to find much more affordable NFTs. And I picked up one or two, which cost me a couple of hundred dollars. I found out later that these NFTs were dead projects because I hadn't done my research. So before you buy an NFT, spend a little bit of time learning about the project. What does that involve? Well, it starts with going on Twitter and finding the NFT account seeing when the account was set up and how engaged its social media followers are. Next, you gotta go over to the NFT projects website, find a roadmap if there is one, because often there isn't, try and learn more about the team and look for an invite to their Discord. Once you join the Discord, um, spend a bit of time interacting with the community and reading up on some of the threads and asking yourself how many people are in the community. And while you're in there, don't, react or respond to any direct messages from other people because chances are they're scammers. Because remember, scammers can join these, these Discord communities for free. When you've joined a few communities, when you've read a few roadmaps and you've gotten a handle for the project in question, you can use NFT websites like rarity.tools to learn about upcoming projects. Then when you know what your budget is, you can go over to OpenSea and buy your first NFT. When you're ready to buy your first NFT, I'd actually recommend buying one not on the Ethereum blockchain, but on Phantom or with a Phantom wallet, wallet using Solana or a different type of blockchain because it'll be far cheaper and you won't have to spend money on gas fees. Gas fees is basically the cost you pay to use the Ethereum blockchain and many blue chip NFTs cost hundreds of dollars to interact with before you've even purchased one. The second mistake you can make with an NFT is buying one and expecting to trade it for a quick flip. Now, the price fluctuations of NFTs are insane. NFTs can go from one each to ten each, back to near zero, all in the course of a couple of weeks. So you've got to prepare yourself for this. And when you're looking at all these crazy price fluctuations, it can seem tempting. You can say to yourself, well, if I just bought this, held on to it for two or three weeks, and I might be able to flip it for a huge profit. Potentially, but you may also get wrecked. That's wrecked, spelt with an or. And that's crypto slang for wiped out. If you're planning on day trading NFTs, I hope you have a huge budget of tens of thousands because you're gonna incur a lot of gas fees, which I talked about a moment ago, to buy and sell them. And chances are some of the NFTs you buy will go to zero. In fact, most NFT projects will go to zero because the space is so new. So when you're buying an NFT, perhaps only buy one because you like the artwork, you like the project, or you simply want to learn more about the space. Write it off, assume it's going to become worthless. Sure that NFT may become worth something in a couple of years time, but chances are it won't. The third mistake that many people make with NFTs is not securing them correctly. So when you want to buy an NFT, basically you have to use a software wallet like MetaMask. You'll load up on Ethereum on a cryptocurrency exchange like Coinbase or Binance, transfer the Ethereum to your MetaMask wallet, and then buy on OpenSea. The process is a little bit different if you're using different blockchain, but you still use a software wallet and the principles are the same. Software wallets are fantastic because they enable people to buy and sell NFTs quickly and easily. Unfortunately, they can also be easily hacked. After spending time on Discord, I discovered that many people are getting hacked by clicking on the wrong links, sent through messages, by clicking on images, yes, images, that install malicious code onto their computer, and by jumping onto support with so-called support team members, sharing their screen, and then the support team member or scammer is taking something from their MetaMask that enables them to 
get in and drain the wallet. There's a simple way to get around all of this. Buy yourself a hardware wallet from the likes of Ledger or Trezor. You can secure your MetaMask wallet with the hardware wallet and then somebody can only transfer tokens out if they physically have the wallet and are able to uh, use your pin code or C phrase or press a button on the wallet to verify or sign a transaction. So if you're going to spend more than a couple of hundred dollars on an NFT or your first NFT or you're going to get involved in the space for more than the short term, then it pays to protect yourself with a hardware wallet. You might regret it later on if you don't. The next mistake that many people make when they get involved in the NFT space is burning all of their budget at once. So I had a couple of each that I bought a couple of years ago because uh, I got involved in cryptocurrency back in 2016. At one point I was able to buy each for $80. What a steal. Right now each is trading for approximately $4,000. So I set aside some of my ETH for buying NFTs on OpenSea. I thought my budget would last me all of the year. What did I know? I got so hooked and involved in the space that I ended up burning through the budget in a matter of a couple of days. Now I got some NFTs which I'm pretty happy with and I'm going to hold on to for the long term. But then the market went downhill as the market does with OpenSea. Or not just with OpenSea, on the entire space. When the market went downhill, I realized that I made a bit of a mistake, not necessarily because I aped all in, which I had, but because I, if I kept some of my budget, I could have got some of these NFTs at a much cheaper price point. Now, I could potentially sell these NFTs and write it off as a tax loss, but I'm probably gonna hold on to them and see what happens. But if you have a budget set aside for NFTs, don't feel the need to spend it all at once, because I've seen the NFT market go through several boom and bust cycles in the course of a couple of months, and it really is an accelerated version of the cryptocurrency market. The next mistake people make when they get involved with NFTs is buying across too many projects that they don't understand. And this happens to people who've got larger budgets. The NFT space is really new. After spending some time learning about it, what I've noticed is the vast bulk of NFTs are digital art. In other words, they are JPEGs that represent uh, a type of digital art that a creator has turned into something that their fans can buy. But then when I learned more about NFTs, I discovered some, like the CryptoPunks, are picture for profiles that you can use, while other NFTs represent a form of decentralized finance whereby you can stake the NFT on the blockchain and earn passive returns. Then there are NFTs that you can use in games, and I discovered some NFTs which creators use uh, to sell their music and other types of creative work. In other words, the space is massive, it's changing rapidly. A week in NFT land is like a year in the real world. It's impossible to keep up with all of these different projects, with all of these different spheres and how these creators are using NFTs. So what I recommend is pick one area of NFTs that interests you. It could be avatar type projects like CyberKongs, or it could be decentralized finance type projects like Anonymize. Learn all about the project, learn about the roadmap and the team, and learn about different projects. And only when you've learned about this type of project, then you can move on to the next one. And this will prevent you from aping all in and spending all your funds on different projects that you don't understand. The sixth mistake that people make with NFTs is not holding on to them for the long term. NFTs aren't usually quick flips, unless you really know what you're doing. Think back to uh, Bitcoin when it first came out in the late 2000s. In 2010, Florida man Lanzo Halanzes bought and ordered two pizzas for approximately 10,000 Bitcoin. Because back then, Bitcoin was worthless, or so it seemed. Last time I checked, those Bitcoin are worth approximately $630 million. It's the same with some NFTs, and I use some with a asterisk and in bold. If you had minted one of the CryptoPunks back in 2018, it would have cost you the cost of gas. Now they're regularly selling for seven or seven figures, and that's if you could even buy one. So if you're buying an NFT, don't sell it because you want to make a quick profit or a quick gain. Try hold on to it for as long as possible. It could become a future blue chip project and it could become something that's that rather valuable. That said, most NFTs will go to zero. So if you have a few NFTs and you figure that selling one will cover the cost of getting involved in the space, then that may be something that you want to consider too. But I offer this piece of advice for you. Do you want to become the next Bitcoin pizza guy? Do you want to become the NFT pizza guy? The seventh mistake that people getting involved in NFTs make is talking to people who have no interest in NFTs about NFTs. Now, when I got involved in NFTs, I lost a bit of sleep over it because the whole space is mesmerizing. It's changing so quickly. A week in NFT land is like a year in the real world. 
And as somebody who spends time creating content and figuring out ways to connect with other creators and help them, um, I couldn't quite get over all the opportunities NFTs offer. You can use them to build communities, you can use them to sell digital art, you can use them to give fans early access to your work, uh, you could use them to turn physical products into digital products, you can use them to connect and with your audience in ways that people hadn't considered before and you can earn in perpetuity from an NFT. I'm still figuring out the NFT space and when I started telling some friends I was getting involved in NFTs, they couldn't believe it. They'd say things to me like, but aren't NFTs just JPEGs? Isn't this just something that you right click on and save as? One friend even messaged me to say, are you really spending money buying fancy little pictures? So I stopped telling some of my friends who had no interest in NFTs all about my NFT habit. So if you're getting involved in the space, don't expect those around you to understand, at least right now, because we're still incredibly early to NFTs. In fact, I would say the NFT space is at where Bitcoin was at in the early 2000s. Most of the projects that exist right now won't be around tomorrow, and some of the blue chip projects haven't even been created or thought of yet. So the very fact that you're watching this video, thinking about NFTs, perhaps creating content about NFTs, and maybe getting ready to buy your first one, means you're already ahead of the curve. So there you go, those are the seven mistakes people make when they get involved in the NFT space. I hope you enjoyed the content in this video. If you like this video, please watch one of the other ones on the channel. And don't forget to subscribe to get my latest content. And let me know in the comments section below if you've got feedback or questions about topics you'd like me to cover.